My friends and I had a phase recently where every day we were playing Don't Starve Together, a co-op survival game which combines Tim Burton-esque aesthetics with Minecraft-like gameplay. It's a pretty punishing game, and our first couple of runs on our first day ended disastrously. But even so, we were having some of the most fun we've had playing games together in a long time, laughing and figuring things out together. Then, that night, in our group chat, people started sharing different videos and guides they found on how to start the game off, and before we knew it, we were starting to survive and set up home bases. Fast forward a couple of days and we're 20 tabs deep into the wiki, setting up farms and figuring out ways to cheese the big bosses. While the progress was good and we were more accomplished, I couldn't help but feel like, as a result, maybe the game had lost some of its charm. This took me down a road where I started to think to myself, do we have too much information in our hands, so much so that the gaming experience has been permanently damaged? Has the pure joy of exploring and learning games been replaced with an impatience that rears its ugly head any time we get stuck? Have we sacrificed creativity and self-expression for some obsession to find the ideal build and to min-max our stats and efficiency? I started to think back on other games we played recently. In Monster Hunter, I found myself constantly searching up what gear to use for my elemental dual blade build. In Pokemon Unite, one of my friends knew the entire meta with the best builds and items from early content creators before we had even gotten two days into the official release. There have been countless other games where I've resorted to looking up guides to figure out puzzles and secrets rather than spending time figuring them out. I realize of course the internet has affected a lot of areas of gaming, including online play and the ability to patch games, both of which I think might deserve videos down the line. For the purposes of this video though, I want to look specifically at how the internet and access to information might have affected the way we game. For all my musings and complaints though, it's pretty clear. Information and guides are nothing new to gaming. Even if you go all the way back to 1981 with the advent of Pac-Man, you can find Ken Uston's Mastering Pac-Man, a near 150 page guide on different versions of Pac-Man with tips for playing the game, including charts detailing movement patterns to survive, and clear levels. Pac-Man was so huge at the time that the book even made an appearance on the New York Times bestseller list. Then of course you have early gaming magazines which would have sections dedicated to tips and tricks for different games. The most famous of these is of course Nintendo Power, which would often give tips and tricks regarding people's favorite Nintendo games. The issue with these guides of course though was the fact that you never knew what game would make an appearance, so it wasn't a guarantee you'd be able to get any help with whatever you were playing at the time. Fast forward a little bit and soon you're able to find specialized game guides stocked on the shelves of stores like GameStop and EB Games. And man, if you thought convincing your parents to buy you a game was hard, imagine trying to convince them to buy you a book about a game. They were probably happy I was at least reading, I guess. These of course had official and unofficial guides for games, and while the accuracy of some of these details might vary, no doubt some of these were gold mines for information. Among some of the earliest I remember getting myself include guides for Mario 64, Diddy Kong Racing, Fire Emblem, and of course, Pokemon. Then with the advent of the internet, everything changed. Suddenly you had dedicated online communities discussing their favorite games, as well as general sites which hosted troves of information for a huge variety of games. One of the greatest of these sites is, of course, GameFAQs. I just wanted to give some appreciation to the real OGs who created the super in-depth game guides on GameFAQs for no monetary return and out of nothing but love for the game. There, you could very easily search for one of your favorite games and find any guide that some kind soul came up with. Some of these guides were so in-depth it was crazy, even going as far as drawing maps out within the guide using nothing but letters and text. And shout out to the people who put the fake cheat codes on GameFAQs, particularly the 100% guarantee to catch any Pokemon button combos which never worked. You trolled a generation of gamers, but even so, you'll have a special place in my heart. As I mentioned before, there was also a natural rise in online communities dedicated to specific games where members could share discoveries and discuss their favorite games. A natural extension of these communities was of course the Game Wiki. The Game Wiki has become such a pivotal part of gaming to the point where now we have games where people in the community will often refer to the game as a wiki game. Games like Stardew Valley and Don't Starve often have so much content to explore that people will actually suggest you have the wiki open on the side to reference while playing. One of the game wikis I particularly remember from my youth wasn't even the dedicated games wiki, but rather, Liquipedia. Back before Team Liquid was the esports giant that it is today, it started off as a forum dedicated to discussing StarCraft Brood War. One of the big projects that Team Liquid had undertaken at the time was the creation of Liquipedia, which became a wiki site dedicated to competitive StarCraft knowledge. I can't even tell you how many hours I spent looking over build orders, jotting them down, and practicing them until they were etched in the tablet of my mind. Another important change is of course the rise of knowledge around coding and how games are developed, which has in turn led to developments in data mining and so-called hackers. 
This in turn has allowed people to investigate and share knowledge over deeper mechanics and how the games we play actually work. Without this development, we may never have learnt about Pokemon EVs and IVs for example, which in turn means we might not have had nearly as robust of a competitive and breeding community as there is today. Then of course, the rise of YouTube and video in general was perhaps the biggest change the internet brought to gaming and access to information. The rise of VODs, or videos on demand, meant that gamers everywhere were now capable of creating gaming content, from let's plays to commentary, from reviews to video guides. This changed everything since gaming is largely a visual medium, and now the guides that used to be built off text were captured just as one might see it on their own screen. One particular change that I think that this video and the general increase in knowledge has brought is also a dramatic increase in the skill levels of players. With video, it became easier to share things like wireframe information, speedrunning tricks, detailed explanations, and as a result, players are better than ever, quicker than ever. To bring it back to StarCraft, I remember hearing some of my favorite StarCraft personalities talking about how the game had evolved into the modern day. One of the things that stuck out to me was when they talked about how early progress was pretty slow. Nick and I, we had found the cool hidden channels because, you know, Al Gore hadn't invented the internet yet, so there right. was no way to really find community sites and mm -hmm. people. What would happen is that you would play a game of StarCraft, right. and once you thought that you lost, you didn't say GG and Lee, you'd sit there and just talk to the person for a little bit. How yeah. did you do that? What what, yeah. what happened? Because yeah. that was literally the only way you were like, ever going to get We didn't have team. replays. Yeah, we replays didn't have anything. Didn't exist. People had to figure things out on their own and iterate as they tried things in practice. Then, with game replays being shared across the internet, the rise of forums and Wikipedia, and then VODs of games becoming more and more accessible, more people began to develop faster and faster as they could springboard off the developments of earlier players. This in turn only led to further development in skill and the metagame as things started to get figured out. An example I think is rather fitting would be one outside of video games. Basketball in many ways has experienced a growth of a similar fashion. In the old days, you would only maybe get local games, but as the NBA grew in popularity nationally and internationally, you started exposing more people to more information. At first, people had to figure out what worked and what didn't, and that's why you ended up with people playing like this. But before you knew it, kids were growing up watching Michael Jordan, and nowadays you have countless highlight reels, you have televised games, as well as access to streams of games. People could then take whatever they saw and try to emulate this in the park or in their own backyard, and as a result, the breadth of talent and overall talent level has undoubtedly risen to an all-time high. So to bring it back to my initial question, has the internet and access to information ruined gaming? I think the answer is clearly no. I think as gaming grew mainstream and the internet exploded, this was really inevitable. But honestly, maybe we did lose out on something with the change of the age. Maybe we are less patient than we used to be. Maybe we are less creative than we used to be. And maybe we also do have more people focus on the destination rather than the journey. But either way, there will always be those who push the boundaries, those who discover and learn new things, and those who share this knowledge with everyone. Even with this overload of information, players will still play games the way they want to play them. If you don't want to use guides, you don't need to, but just having the option is what's so great. The benefits are obvious though. These help players to not waste valuable time, to get started quicker, and to enjoy the depth that many games have to offer, which further allows developers to create deeper games. Maybe most importantly, it has also enabled players to beat games they might not have before. It's helped us develop our skills and our communities, and as a result, it's taken gaming to its farthest limits and into the future. Let me know what you think. And if you made this far, I just want to say I appreciate you checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button as it really helps out my channel. And as usual, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.